So good evening, everybody else there, out there, and Michael. Hello, Bonte. So you are ready for tonight's topic? No. <laughs> yes, one no so far. I read the material. It's something that we um, that we actually covered some time ago. I've gone over it, you know, probably at least two or more times in the last, uh, you know, three or four years. Right. It is something that's not very much talked about, and and uh, because you know it's anyway, I'll, I'll mention that as we go. Orapin, hello. Okay, it's uh, seven o'clock, uh, so uh, we will go ahead and start with reciting Namo Tassa and the uh, three refuges for those who like to uh, do that. <clears throat> Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang saranang gacchami, Dhammang saranang gacchami, Sangang saranang gacchami, Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gacchami, Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gacchami, Yuti ampi sangang saranangachami, Kati ampi buddhang saranangachami, Kati ampi dhammang saranangachami, Kati ampi sangang saranangachami. Welcome, friends, to this Wednesday evening's uh, Dhamma discussion and uh, meditation practice. So uh, I hope you are all able to read over the material that I sent out in the attachment uh, a few days ago on the insight knowledges. And this basically is a continuation of uh, what we've been uh, reviewing uh, uh, in the for the last couple of months uh, in the uh, teachings of the or the masterful teachings of Gautama Buddha, my recent uh, book, or uh, reprinting of that book, and uh, so it's sort of like the culmination of you know uh, developing uh, practicing the Dhamma and meditation and and uh, understanding the mind, and uh, especially the teachings of those five aggregates that we've been focusing the last few weeks. Uh, so these eight insight knowledges, really they're the, uh, you could say the culmination of the insight or Vipassana meditation uh, practice. Now, when you know, in these popular schools of meditation and so on, or Vipassana teachings, they, they don't normally uh, teach those uh, stages of, of insight because uh, it's an advanced stage. It's what I call advanced Vipassana meditation. And most people are probably have not developed the degree of mindfulness and concentration needed to uh, uh, develop these later stages, because it's these later stages that actually culminate 
in the experience of entering the stream and the uh, the, the last three stages of uh, the, that process of liberation, of liberating the mind from greed, hatred, and delusion. But it's good to understand them because it's kind of like uh, the what's next, the what's next, you know, people are, you know, they've been practicing meditation and practicing watching the breath for a long time. Maybe they get some fairly decent concentration. Maybe they even reach the first jhana or the second jhana. Uh, and they're just doing that as a kind of an exercise to gain concentration. And, you know, then, then they're asking, well, what's next? What's next? And so, you know, if you're really interested in developing the Buddha's path to liberating the mind, then this pretty much is the next path. And it's not different than the four foundations of mindfulness. It's just uh, the kind of the, the culmination of the four foundations of mindfulness. Practice, especially in the Dhamma Nupassana, in the development of the seven factors of enlightenment. So anyway, uh, we've all heard about the, you know, impermanence. So Vipassana meditation is really focused on meditation, uh, on the, the developing the insight into impermanence. That's the first stage of insight. Uh, and this is in contrast, this again is the next stage after concentration. So people develop concentration, they get some PT and the sukha and the five hindrances are uh, have hopefully subsided uh, to a good extent. And then they <clears throat> are able to then open up to the flow of impermanence. We've already talked about that. Uh, but the ability to discern impermanence, impermanence has different levels or the, the practice of Dhamma has always has three different levels. And the first is the external level. So we see impermanence in the external world. We see people, the aging, getting diseases and aging and then dying. Okay, we say impermanent, impermanent. Uh, life is impermanent. Health is impermanent. Uh, temperature is always changing. That's impermanent. And uh, the things that are coming through our senses, sight, sound, smells, taste, touches, are coming and going. Those things are always changing. Uh, so, you know, to, we, we understand that at a kind of a, you know, a certain uh, level, but that's only the first level of understanding. Then it's about understanding the impermanence of the mental process and how quickly our mind changes uh, from moment to moment. And you can only notice that when you've developed a deeper late deeper uh, uh, state of uh, concentration and the ability to have detachment. So the ability to sort of observe your body and mind uh, with the mind grounded in the present moment and observing how quickly your sensations are changing uh, and your thoughts are changing, but without getting dragged into them, you're able to have some kind of detachment to them and have a level of patience where you can endure them and watch a, a, a disturbing or an irritating itch, for example, for four or five seconds, and then seeing how it quickly changes or disappears or some other annoying sensations or sounds uh, by not letting the mind get uh, dragged away by them. You can see how they last usually just several moments and, and change. So we can kind of, you know, understand that when you're in that level of a deeper uh, focused awareness, we can understand that uh, sort of inner process of the mental impermanence, especially in, in, in the aggregate. So we've talked a lot about the aggregates the material form, the physical vibrations, the, the feelings that are, are changing, the perceptions in the mind's thoughts and urges about them. Uh, but again, uh, it's usually on a fairly superficial level because people haven't developed that 
a deep, deeper level of, of concentration. So again, it really depends on the amount of concentration. I actually have a little formula that goes something like uh, mindfulness plus concentration equals vipassana. Uh, and a vipassana in the deeper sense of seeing reality as it is. And reality as it is, is that everything is constantly changing. And you can only understand that clearly when you're doing this kind of uh, vipassana uh, form of mindfulness or a mindfulness that's developed to that deeper level. So, uh, and that also, uh, you can get very concentrated in developing that uh, uh, level of uh, focused awareness. And that's normally what we do in the guided meditations that I'm, uh, I usually lead you through. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, hopefully in trying to get your mind to tune in to that flow of impermanence. Anyway, uh, this, uh, <clears throat> these insight knowledges or part of what is called the knowledge and vision of the way. And uh, that is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the sixth insight or the sixth stage of purification, purification by knowledge and vision of the way uh, that we've, we've gone over those before. Perhaps we'll, we'll review them again uh, as we, after we finish this level or uh, so, uh, the first insight knowledge is the knowledge of rise and fall. And if you've read uh, this material that I sent out, it's about tuning in to the six senses and the contacts of, of form, you know, of, the, of bodily feeling, sound, smell, taste, touch, and thoughts as they are coming and going. Uh, from moment to moment. So first you have to get the mind centered and grounded in present moment awareness, which I normally always uh, try to have people, uh, you know, practicing in these guided meditations. But whether you have, you know, able to do that sufficiently or not, uh, you know, each person is going to be at a different level. But I just have to put out the information and hope that people will, if you're not at the level yet, when it happens, you'll be able to say, ah, Bhante talked about that. That's right. This, this is right, you know. And so uh, other people might think they're going crazy uh, <laughs> you know, if they don't sort of know what's uh, happening. So the, uh, <clears throat> so that's why in the breathing, the breathing is the training device, is the, usually the first training device. So you tune into how quickly the in-breath comes and the in-breath goes. So that means you have to notice the moment the in-breath starts, whether you're focusing at the tip of the nose or better yet, the way I, I normally uh, advise, it's easier to feel the, the moment the in-breath starts, the expanding of the abdomen and how it continues for one or two seconds, depending on how long the breath is, and then it stops. And then if you're aware of the pause, if your mind doesn't wander and you're aware of the pause, you'll be able to notice the moment the out breath stops and follow it for those few moments. So when it's, it stops, when the last bit of air goes out of the lungs, that's when the out breath stops. So the training is you tune in to see the beginning and the end of the in breath in the beginning and end of the out breath to see it clearly. But again, your mind has to be concentrated because the mind will normally wander between the in and out breaths. If you're not aware of the pause, that's why I always mention, be aware of the pause also because that's where the mind normally wanders. Even in a split second, the mind will wander or, uh, if you're not paying attention to it. So you have to deliberately pay attention to it. Those four phases of each breath the, the in-breath, expanding in-breath, 
and there's many little sensations in one expanding in breath you can notice three or four more uh, separate little movements of the diaphragm it's about the movements of the the uh, diaphragm and the rib cage is what you're actually feeling uh, as it's expanding and contracting but so you you're focusing on that until it becomes quite clear and you can see those moments coming and going very quickly and then in between sounds will come and go uh, or maybe a thought or an urge will come and go and you you just try to keep the mind in the present moment without being distracted to follow this continuous uh, change uh, process of of change that means the, the rising and vanishing of uh, body sensations sounds usually when you're sitting you don't have many visual vibrations so mostly it's body sensations and sounds and of course thoughts it could be some once in a while a smell or something but primarily it's those three body sensations sounds and thoughts there's usually something always available maybe not too many sounds if you're in a very quiet place but certainly body sensations and thoughts so you, you have to deliberately tune into it I think people think will it happen, happen automatically well it may or it may not you have to kind of nudge it a little bit to pay particular attention to it just as if you don't pay particular attention to the breathing you're not going to notice the, the breathing either right but we say okay the breathing is the focus of your concentration so a person focuses on that when we say impermanence is the focus of your concentration so you focus on seeing how many different things you can notice coming and going without the mind getting stuck or carried away by uh, so that is the beginning of that the stage of uh, discerning rise and fall uh, which means the impermanence uh, how things arise last a moment or two and vanish and it's followed by something else and that arises and vanish followed by something else and you know if you have really good concentration you can notice three or four or even more things arising and vanishing almost simultaneously or in the space of just you know one or two seconds you can notice many things uh, coming and going but again it depends on your concentration if you've reached the level especially of access concentration to be the minimum or better yet the first jhana level of concentration then you'll be able to see that quite clearly uh, because that's just the, the nature of how concentration uh, allows you to, uh, you know, have this kind of uh, insight. If you don't get stuck on the blissful feelings of the concentration, that's the whole point. Most people get stuck on the pleasurable feelings and they just want to hang out in this jhanic, nice and blissful piti and sukha. And, the inner quietness but you have to do, that's why you have to deliberately tune your mind to impermanence if you don't that's the buddha's exact instructions he said from the jhana then you deliberately bend your mind toward uh, uh observing the you know impermanence so uh so that that process of noticing moment to moment builds up a great speed as i mentioned but even faster than what I've just mentioned. I mean, when you're really, really concentrated, you can experience literally hundreds of things arising and vanishing within the space of even a few seconds. It's, it's again, it's like looking through that kind of concentration is like a, a microscope, turning up the power of a microscope. And I've used this analogy so many times in the past uh, that each uh, increase in your concentration each little decrease of the hindrances increases that power of the microscope to see clear and clear uh, this process of impermanence. And that's why it's, it's so critical and necessary uh, for developing a higher level of, uh, of you know, insight into impermanence. So anyway, that process, you have to sustain that process, you know, longer and longer. 
until it becomes uh, crystal clear. Uh, and it develops into a very high rate. And you understand that all the sense objects are just momentarily arising and in, in, uh, vanishing. But the only thing that's consistent is the awareness. The awareness is what is consistent, is a, is a kind of a constant. And because of the concentration, the awareness is staying uh, there in the present moment. That's the state of concentration. But these uh, objects are coming and going uh, through this focused still awareness. Your, constant, your awareness isn't moving. The, the objects are arising and vanishing. Uh, and it's very similar to a motion picture reel of film. You know, the light on the projector is like our awareness, but the individual frames of a movie that's running fast through that light, you know, that's, that's our senses, each of the senses just arising and uh, passing away from moment to moment. That's the reality of the impermanence, but the light of the projector is our consciousness, is the awareness, is the present moment awareness and that is not moving you know that awareness doesn't follow all the frames going through the picture no it's still it's just that light that's still and the objects are what are arising and vanishing of course we don't see the arising and vanishing because of the uh the attachment that we have uh, it's moving too uh, sort of fast but on a slow motion projector, if you happen to play a movie reel on a slow motion projector, then you can almost see that staccato like of the different frames going through because it's been kind of slowed down uh, or speeded up, you might say. What we're actually doing is speeding up the ability to notice more and more uh, things coming and going without the mind clinging to it. But anyway, so that uh, when, when you really get that insight into uh, the insight into a rise and fall, where it's, it really becomes crystal clear. It's almost like flash bulbs going off. Uh, uh, seeing these different uh, moments, what we call mind moments of hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling. Uh, touching and thinking, arising and vanishing. Now, you may not get to that point because you'd have to have probably third or fourth level uh, jhanic concentration to be able to see it that clearly. But even if you don't see it in that ultimately clear way, you can get a good taste of it. It's like uh, if you went to a well, let's say if you're, you know, you went to a water well and you look down and you see the reflection in the bottom of a well of water, you know that there's water down there, but you may not be able to actually taste it. But at least you know that there's water uh, down there. So the same way in the practice of Vipassana, when you get these insights, especially the insight into impermanence, you, you, be, you begin to understand what the Buddha was talking about about the impermanence of the mind and how the mind is, is changing faster than the body, for example. Uh, so we can notice body sensations coming and going, but the Buddha said the mind is changing hundred or thousands of times faster than the, the body sensations are changing. The, the, men, the mind is processing information much faster than that. That's why it requires a good uh, degree of concentration to notice. Anyway, so that is the, uh, the first insight knowledge of uh, uh, arise and fall, or means, uh, I, I like to call it the arising and vanishing, because that's really a moment of hearing just arises and vanishes, that, that fall. Like, listen to this. Eh? Okay. Did that arise and vanish? You saw that very, you heard that very clearly, right? But now I'm talking very fastly. You can't hear each of those sentences or syllables arising and vanishing, right? Because I'm talking too fast. 
Is it right? But if I now slow down my speech, you heard each of those arising and vanishings of the sound. Is that? Okay, that's an example of arising and vanishing. But when we talk too fast, people's minds are slow. They can't, uh, they can't pick it up. They can't discern it. Or if the mind is distracted. So the same with body sensations. And the same with the breathing. Uh, so we can, when we develop the concentration on the breathing, and we can discern how quick, you know, the clearly how the in-breath starts and stops, starts and stops, and you keep focusing on that for a long period of time, then next to it, you'll feel a little, you know, itch on the head, it just arose and vanished. Or maybe you'll feel the heartbeat or a pulse of blood, boom, arose and vanished. Then you might hear a sound arise and vanish. Ah, so you gradually, slowly now, you are beginning to tune into that. As long as you don't get carried away by the, by the objects with, with thinking or reacting, uh, then that's how you're able to, to tune in and keep in the flow of the uh, impermanent sustain. That, that's where you sustain it. Because there's always something else coming. Uh, in most people's houses, there's some kind of sounds. Maybe you have the fan on, the air conditioning, or the heater, or the ticking clock. Even normally, we think these things are disturbances. No, when we practice vipassana, the more dis- the more things we can notice and hear, the better, because that's how we really can tune our mind in to see how quickly the things are coming in. And so this is a kind of a radically different uh, type of meditation that the average person is used to. The normal person just wants to gain some concentration, get their mind to quiet, and then you know go to sleep or. Uh, just think, oh, that was a good meditation. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, this is a, a different uh, switching on to Vipassana and tuning in to the rise and fall. Uh, that is, you know, a, you know, a different, uh, you know, a higher level, which we, we would call a higher level. Uh, if you are indeed wanting to practice uh, Vipassana or the four foundations of of mindfulness. Now, uh, again, if any questions, you know, come up in any, anybody, you can write some questions down in the uh, chat box that we're going to, we're only going to just cover this one and the next one, uh, uh, not do them, all of them uh, this week, uh, because there's, there's too much. Uh, but anyway, so you, as you go on noticing and speeding up the rate of perception, the ability to notice, uh, you know, again, countless uh, subtle, and, and, you know, you're, you're noticing subtle sensations. Before you notice a gross sensation, but as the mind stays focused, you start to notice subtle sensations. That means underneath the gross breathing, you know, might feel just one in or out breath, as you stay focused, you'll notice these sub moments of the in breath and the out breath. Uh, or the sub moments of the sound, as I mentioned. As I mentioned, you could, okay, five or six right there, you saw that, as I mentioned. And that's what you tune into. You no, know, people are just saying, oh, what's he talking about? No, no, tune into the impermanence. That's, that's how you have to apply the meditation. This is not intellectual theory. It's applying the attention. Uh, and the, the intellectual part is just hopefully to try to, you know, to get your mind on the track. Anyway, so uh, you build up that ability to sustain that ability. And things coming so fast, you don't even see them arising anymore. It's like you only see them vanishing, like a shooting star through uh to the sky. If you've ever watched uh, a meteor shower on a clear night, you know, and you're looking up in a in the star, and when a meteor goes off, all you see is sort of the, the tail end of it, just kind of vanishing off. You, you hardly even see where it came from; it just gone. Uh, so, 
in that we, even your thoughts, a thought may arise and start to vanish. Normally you'd get caught on to it and think about it, but now when the mind is in this state of awareness, even thoughts, the, the mind is so quick, it can notice that thought uh, coming, but without holding on to it, it vanishes because there's something else on its heels. You're not holding on to anything. That's the only way our mind holds on to objects and builds up thoughts about them is because you're identifying them, holding on to them, and because you don't have anything else to notice. So you get stuck. But in Vipassana, that's a very skillful technique that the Buddha uh, developed uh, to deliberately try to notice more and more things coming and going. So the mind can't get attached or cling to any particular one. There's always something. And if there's not many sounds in your house, there's always body sensations. Even if you just did that with body sensations. Uh, that's your, uh, and then, of course, there's going to be thoughts, too, in, until you reach a very higher level. But uh, even with body sensations, that's why techniques like scanning the body to the body to, to notice subtler and subtler sensations, these are good training uh, techniques also but not limited just to body sensations. You open it up and while you're doing that, you can hear sounds coming and going different places. Uh, so like that, you uh, increase the ability to notice more and more uh, so that, and when you start doing that, the, the, your perception of reality begins to, uh, you know, morph, uh, into things starting to disappear because things only appear to be real when we're stopping to think about them and identifying with them. But when things are rising and vanishing so quickly, uh, even the, the feeling of your body may disappear or the feeling of the self may disappear. We'll talk more about that later. But uh, things are rising. So the second of the insight knowledges is just the horizon of dissolution. And that's when things start to disappear. Uh, that the world, your, your ordinary focused, little sterilized viewpoint of me sitting here meditating and I'm doing things in my life, that is a mental constructed process. Uh, but it, and that starts to fall apart when you reach this uh, high level of advanced uh, awareness on uh, uh, impermanence. And the, 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 the dissolution, what is called bango, dissolution means when you reach that stage where the mind has no time to cling to perceptions or any kind of thoughts arise. And so therefore, the brain shifts into a different uh, paradigm, or you could say a dimension of uh, present moment awareness where it's kind of like empty. Uh, and uh, that that uh, is coming to the state of uh, the dissolution that the things are starting to just uh, dissolve. Uh, uh, or at least, you know, at a very high rate, uh, things the, the mind has nothing to cling on to. And but that is actually is a uh, we're going to cover that next week, but that leads to some, uh, you know, the appearance of terror and danger. But we'll talk more about that uh, next next week because we don't want to go on too much uh, this week. But uh, so uh, I'm going to maybe finish this uh, talk about uh, the first insight knowledge of rise and fall, and uh, it seems to be one chat let's hope it's about that or, uh, or if anybody wants to raise a hand raise your yellow hand to ask a question uh, about that uh, we can do that okay this question near Bhante, if you are in a jhana do you have to come out of the jhana to contemplate impermanence uh, it depends on what kind of a jhana you're in. Uh, 
there's two types of jhana. There's one called apana jhana, or absorbed concentration, and there's one called vipassana jhana, which is the, the jhana we use when we're developing uh, insight meditation, practicing vipassana. Now, if you're in a jhana where you're focused on just one object, let's say you're focused at the tip of the nose and you develop that little nimitta, for example, of some white light or something else, and you focus on that, then you're going to largely lose your awareness of things going on around you. And uh, the mind will only have those jhana factors in its mind. And that object of uh, the jhana that you've uh, been uh, concentrating on, it could be a colored disc or uh, some other kind of objects. But so if you're in that kind of jhana, yes, you have to come out of that jhana in order to, because you have to be awake to the six senses, you have to remain in a state of awareness, but you've attained the first jhana uh, by the time you reach this level of you know, arising and vanishing, you, you would be in a pretty much the first jhana already, because the five hindrances absolutely have to be uh, uh, suppressed to have this kind of uh, focused concentration. There can no, be no sleepiness at all. The mind has to be awoke. You can have applied and sustained thought as that attention to impermanence. Uh, so in, with the Vipassana jhana, you don't come out of that. That's what we want to continue to uh, practicing the, the Vipassana. So it depends on what kind of jhana they're talking about. And there's a confusion when people talk about the jhana because a lot of people, they dismiss this uh, idea of vipassana uh, jhana. But uh, people that practice vipassana are going to know about it. Uh, but it, it's a different quality. So you don't come out of it if you've developed vipassana, if, you do, if you've gotten the jhana through the development of the mindfulness and the vipassana uh, and developing especially this moment-to-moment -moment concentration. You can gain that level of uh, and even the word jhana. I don't like to, you know, focus on them too much because there's a lot of confusion around it. You know, uh, it's about the mind not moving, you know, the hindrances being suppressed. That's the main criteria. Call it apples or oranges or anything else. The criterion is the hindrances are suppressed, and your mind is focused in the present moment. That is. And that is what we call vipassana jhana, and that is what we use when we are uh, going into the deeper levels of developing uh, that. Now, there are other ways of developing insight through using those other uh, absorbed jhanas, but I'm not going to go into those. That's a totally different method. Uh, and it's much more, in my opinion, it's much more difficult than the vipassana method because I've, I've tried them also. But anyway, it, you know, to each his own. I mean, people are going to be attracted to certain methods that seem to uh, resonate with their, their experiences and uh, whatever previous conditions they've cultivated. Um, so. As we acquire these skills on the meditation cushion, do we or should we turn them off as we interact with society as a whole, work, family? Is there danger of not being able to function normally in everyday situations? I doubt if you're going to develop that deep of a level. Of course, if you are involved in family and work and all that, it is going to be, you probably won't be able to sustain that level of intense uh, observation, because again, it requires a jhanic level of concentration to sustain that. So a person in ordinary life situation probably is not going to have the conditions to do that. But again, people are different. And of course, you can, once you go back on the cushion uh, and meditate, you can easily, once you, once you uh, get a taste of what these states are like the, the, the perception of impermanence and tuning into the moment to moment conditions, then it's easier to 
to get back into that. It's easier to get back to it because it's sort of like a channel on a TV set or a radio. You know, you have many different radio frequencies and you can tune into country, western rock and roll, hillbilly, uh, long hair music, uh, so many different kinds, right? And before you might have to focus on the channel, is that it? Read the dial, okay, 95.5. But once you get familiar with that, you can just go right to it, you know, because you become familiar with it. So the same way with, uh, you know, reaching states of jhana and also these vipassana levels of insight, once you've uh, become acquainted with them, but certainly your daily life, you, if you have traumas and all kind of intense, full, stressful situations, uh, that is going to affect your ability to, uh, to easily uh, get back into that. And uh, there could be in some situations, uh, you know, the mind will lose interest. And I'm going to talk about those in the next few, you know, next week when we talk about the appearance of terror and danger. That's the next, next, the next level. Don't worry about that le level. First, worry about getting this level of, uh, you know, perception of impermanence uh, clear. Uh, you know, other things may come in due time, but uh, don't worry about it right now. Um, and uh, so this other question, uh, I mainly practice the Mahasi way or the loving kindness. Uh, well, that's good. The Mahasi way is this way of developing moment to moment concentration, noting the different moments and hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, and thinking, and tuning into that uh, perception of impermanence. But again, it all depends on the, the success in that technique is how much uh, ability to uh, remain uh, concentrated and focused without being distracted. So even in the Masi technique, even though they don't say you need jhana, you, you reach to be passing the jhana if they're doing that, because I practice that myself and I know. Uh, uh, and that's the way that, you know, I initially, uh, you know, developed uh, my practice of vipassana through that way, but not limiting it to that. As you know, I also practice yoga and so on, which enhances the ability to have deeper levels of concentration too. Uh, the way of loving kindness is basically not a vipassana method, although uh, once you gain the concentration and the mind becomes calm, if you don't get stuck on the jhana factors, then you, you can then, once the mind has been calm through practicing uh, uh, metta, then you would have to then deliberately again uh, tune in to the moments of uh, the flow of impermanence from moment to moment. But Bhante, I, I just wanted to say that nowhere else, I mean, I'm living here uh, in a senior community in Florida. And Nowhere else in my life have I witnessed and felt the, 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 the nature of impermanence as I have here. Meaning in the two years that I have lived here, I have seen six deaths. Six people have died, mainly because, you know, the, the age group is such is 70s, 80s, Few people are even in their 90s. So, you know, it, 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 it is so vivid over here that one day you are, you are developing relationships with these people, you become friends with them, you interact with them on a daily basis. And then, lo and behold, somebody is developing cancer, somebody is got some depression and within days or weeks, these people are gone. Yes. You see, so since I have come here, this is the point I'm making that I have never felt 
the impermanence so strongly as I as I am feeling it over here. Yeah, but that's the external impermanence. We're talking about internal impermanence in our practice of vipassana. is all about internal impermanence, not external impermanence. It doesn't need meditation to understand external impermanence. Anybody knows that. But it's the internal impermanence is what we're focusing on, the, the impermanence of your mental states from moment to moment and how you... Yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I know we are talking about that, but I'm just talking about impermanence on the whole, that one day life is here and the next moment it's gone. Yes, of course, absolutely. But people try to ignore it and think it's not going to happen to them, but one day it will happen. Right, right. So, so that truth, I mean, you have done awareness of that, uh, you know, this retreats many times. Um, so it, it really just, just becomes so clear how impermanent life is since I have started living here in this community. But the external world is just a continuation of our internal world. Uh, the, the, you know, the impermanence of the mind is, you know, exhibited in the external world. Uh, world. Right, right, right. So I think my question to you is after I, I, I have expressed this, that these people with whom, as I earlier said, you develop relationships with them, uh, you become friends with them, and you sort of become, you know, you, you can't just stay away completely from getting a little bit attached to them. But suddenly when they are gone, how do you how do you deal with your own emotions? Like one day this guy is here and the next day gone. <laughs> Through meditation, because you're, you know, you're not, yeah. the impermanence of your mental states is much. You're worried about the external world, not your internal world. And knowing that, uh, you know, these getting attached to people, you, you know that they're going to die in a few days. Why get attached to them? You know, you just, you have to, you know, you have to accept the reality that the same thing is going to happen to you. And it's not a callous state of mind. It's the reality. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's painful, but it, it's, that's the nature of the life. And people, you know, it's, it's a perfect time for you to develop that uh, detachment by living in that situation, rather than people that are living or only around young people or other types of things and you know what's kind of hidden to them, but it, this is very evident, you know, and even in, in your own uh, self, you have to prepare the mind or that you're going to have to leave the world. Too. Anyway, uh, we need to, uh, we're going to bring this uh, discussion to an end now because we want to uh, yeah, continue with our meditation practice, okay? So, so friends, uh, we'll take a few minute uh, break and then come back and do a few yoga exercises and then uh, get into the impermanence of the body, okay?
Put my clock out so I can see it, please. Okay, friends, so let's try to stand straight, relax your arms at the sides, gently close your eyes. Try to feel your eyes in the sockets or your head balanced on top. From that point on behind the eyes, try to feel the outline of the standing body. If you can't feel that anyway, just begin some deep, slow breathing. Try to take two or three seconds to expand the abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs for two seconds. And slowly breathe out. I feel the last bit of air go out of the lung. Just take a few more deep, slow breaths like that, developing this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we'll combine this breathing with the movements. You can open your eyes and observe as I lead you through it. Repeating each movement exercise three times. The whole time is try to feel the physical sensations being generated by the movements and breathing. So on the next in-breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch your head back, stretch up. On the out-breath, turn the palms down, touch the top of your head. In in breath, palms up, straighten the arms, stretch the head back, bend back a little bit, out breath, touch the top of the head. Third time, hold the upward stretch longer, bend back a little more. Feel the sensations, feel the arch in the spine. And release the fingers, the out breath, arms back to the sides. Feel the sensations in the hands and fingers. Relax, close the eyes. I feel the outline of the body. Can't feel that, at least feel the increased sensations in your hands and fingers. Feel your feet pressing the floor. Just remember standing, standing. Standing the present moment of the body, letting go of your thoughts, just 
you're tuned into the breathing. On the next in breath, push up on your toes while raising the arms over the head. Face the hands toward each other about six inches apart and stretch up. Out breath, come back down, arms to the side, heels to the floor, feel the sensations. In, in breath, up. Stretch. Out. Once more, in. Stretch. Out. Close the eyes. Just feel the feet pressing the floor. The arms and hands at the side. The head balanced on top. Or feel the outline of the body. Feel the clothing touching the skin. Feel the subtler sensation. You feel the in breathing and out breathing. Next, we'll do the knee bending. On the in-breath, you can lift up on the toes, raise the arms up front for balance. On the out-breath, bend the knees, lower down, balancing on the balls of the feet. And take a deep breath, the muscles in the leg, pushing the body up. Up on the toes. Out-breath. In out. In The out breath, relax. Just close the eyes. Feel the increased heart beating, other sensations. Just letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Keep the body sensation in front of the awareness. Feel all that change, sensations constantly changing. Perception of inner impermanence. Change going on under the skin.
Next we'll do side bending using both arms. On the in breath, raise both arms up. Keep your fingers and arms straight, close to the head. On the out breath, bend over the right side. As far as you comfortably can, keep the arms close together, par parallel to each other like railroad track. In breath, lift up. Then bend over the other side, out breath. In breath, up. Again to the right, out breath. In. Out. In. Once more to each side. The out breath, lower the arms. Just close the eyes, keep feeling the body. Just try to feel the, the outline of the body. Head on top, arms at the sides, feet pressing the floor. Feel the clothing touching the skin. You feel the outline of the whole body. So many different sensations, pulsations, coming and going. Flow of impermanence under the skin. On the outer body or inner body. Okay, now spread your legs apart about three feet. The wider the better. Hold the arms out to the sides. We'll do twisting from side to side. And breathe in. On the out breath, twist to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going back. Breath, come back to the front. Let your feet turn with the body and then twist to the other side on the out breath. In breath, front. Let's continue that again to the right, out breath. Out. In. Once more to its side. Thank 
Come back to the front. Lower the arms, close the eyes. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the hands touching the legs. Pulsations in the fingers. The breathing, clothing touching the skin. Should be able to feel so many different sensations right there in the awareness. Body centered awareness. Letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. You know, keeping the legs apart, we'll do the forward and backward bending. Let the hands touch the front of your legs. <clears throat> so breathe in. On the out breath, let your hands come down to your kneecaps. Keep the legs straight, the arms straight, try to flatten the spine. Keep the head up, looking out straight ahead. Feel the stretch in the back of your legs. In breath, lift up. Move the hands under the buttocks for support. And let your head go back. On the out breath, gently bend backwards. Keep your eyes open. Not too far the first time. Look at the ceiling. Feel the arch in the spine. In breath, carefully lift up. On the next out breath, let the hands come below the knees. Still keep your head up, looking out straight ahead. Flatten the spine. Feel the extra stretch in the back of your legs, muscles. In breath, lift up. Again, the back bend, out breath, be careful. In breath, lift up. And the third time, let the hands come down as far as you can towards your feet and hold on to your legs and feet longer. Feel the stretch in the back of your legs, also in the lower spine. The little bones in the lower spine stretch out. Feel all those sensations. And lift up for an in breath. And once more, the back bend, just be careful. Out breath. In breath, lift up. On the out breath, just relax the shoulders, feel the whole body, just close the eyes. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the hands touching the leg, clothing touching the skin. Feel the head on top. 
and feel the outline of the whole body vibrating, pulsating with activated life force. Okay, now bring your legs back together. That's one last exercise. Head turning from right to left. On the in-breath, turn the head to the right as far as you comfortably can. Looking over your right shoulder. On the out-breath, Turning the head 180 degrees back to the left. And look over the left shoulder. In breath back to the right. Out breath left. In breath, right. Out, left. Once more to each side. With the in-breath, let the head stop in the center. Keep feeling the body. And feel the outline of the whole body. Feel those vibrations, sensations, the activated life force all over the body. Okay, now we'll come back to our seats, get ready for the sitting awareness.
fix it. Can you turn that off? Okay, friends, uh, be comfortable in your sitting posture. You keep your back and back of your head in a straight line, spinal column. Keep the chin lifted up level with the floor. <clears throat> and find the center of gravity of the head and the spine over the hips. And gently close your eyes. That point on the eyes, feel your face. We're going to spend some time moving our attention down to the body, feel more body sensations. Just keep feeling your face and head on top of the spinal column. Feel the eyes and the socket. And feel the subtle eye movements, the pulse of blood in the capillaries of the eye. You feel your lips touching together, you feel the dryness or the moistness. Feel the tongue inside the mouth. See if you can feel the, the point of the chin, subtle sensations, your chin. Try to feel or imagine the thickness of the neck. And inside the throat, feel some sensation. Feeling the throat, the neck. Now feel your shoulders, relax the shoulders. Feel where the clothing touches the skin of your shoulders. Feel some sensation on the right shoulder and the left shoulder. Keep letting go of your thoughts. The mind gets caught on any thoughts. Bring it back to the body part. Now feel the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulders. Mm -hmm. 
Move the attention between the shoulders, feel the chest area, the clothing touching the skin of the chest. Take a deep, slow breath, feel that expansion, and contraction of the chest. You might feel the heart beating inside the chest. Hold the air in the lungs a few seconds. And move the attention down to feel the movements of the stomach and abdomen as you breathe in. Again, take a deep breath. Feel the expansion of the abdomen, the stomach, the rib cage. So all those different sensations. Now feel your hands and fingers touching together where they rest in your lap or on your legs. Try to feel the outline of your thumbs and other fingers. Feel the subtle pulse of blood in the palm. Subtle and tingling sensation. Which is the life force vibration. Now move the attention down to feel the buttocks pressing the seat. Feel or imagine a hundred or more pounds of body pressing the buttocks on the seat. See if you can feel the right buttock and the left buttock. And feel the sensations in the, the whole groin pelvic area. Lots of different sensations. I didn't notice how they just come and go, change. Now feel your knees, the right knee and the left knee, any pains might be there. The clothing touching the skin of the knee, front of the knee and the soft flesh of the back of the knee. And feel your lower legs, your calf muscle, your shin bone. Where your legs are crossed underneath.
You now feel your feet starting with the heels. Feel both of your heels, the sensations in the heels. able to feel the pulse of blood. You feel the arches of the feet. And feel your toes. Start to feel the outline of your big toes. And any of the other toes where they touch together. Just feel the pulse of blood in the feet. Feel that aliveness in the feet. Permanence, blood coming and going, pulsation. Now, from the feet, just allow the bring the attention back up. Rest on the eyes. From that point on the eyes, try to feel the outline of the whole sitting body, the head on top, the arms at the sides, hands touching, buttocks pressing, the seat, feet pressing the floor, just the, the general vague outline. Just try to hold that outline or silhouette of the sitting posture in the mind's eye. Then check the posture and realign the spine and the back of the head. Keep the chin lifted up level with the floor. And hold that outline of the sitting body in the mind's eye. The inbuilt movie camera of the awareness. And then again, take some deep, slow breaths. Feel the expansion of the abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs for two or three seconds to feel the pause. And feel the long contraction of the out breath. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Just try to take several more deep, slow breaths like that. Developing this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body.
Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count the breaths from one to ten, develop a more focused concentration on the breathing. Keep your attention focused in the center of the body, feel the expanding and contracting movements of the abdomen, rib cage, and chest. And take some slightly deeper breaths if you can. I'll do the counting for you. Just try to follow that with the breathing awareness. Go on the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the breath in for one or two seconds. On the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feeling the last bit of air go out of the lung. Next in breath, two. Out breath, two. In three. Out three. In four. Out four. In five. Out fire. In six. Out six. In seven, out seven, in eight. Out it in nine out. Nine in ten out ten. Now discontinue the counting. 
Let the breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. Don't control the breath anymore, so let it go to its own rhythm, but continue to feel it. Just keep your attention focused on the center of the body, feel the expanding and contracting sensation. The body may still want to take some deeper breaths, that's okay. Just keep the mind focused on expanding and contracting movements. Try to feel where the clothing rubs against the skin of the stomach, rib cage, or chest. It continually expands and contracts, producing sensations. Try to notice, feel those different sensations. Expanding and contracting. They're always changing. Just be like a scientist looking down through a microscope. Try to tune in to the four phases of each breath cycle. Expanding in breath in the brief pause. The contracting out breath in the brief pause. Especially the alert to feel the pause between the breath. If you were of the pause, you'll be there for the start of the Next out breath or in breath. Just feeling the whole in breath from beginning to end. Several different expanding sensations. A brief pause. Noticing. Several different contracting sensations. A brief pause. And make these brief mental notes to help stay focused so it's clear what's happening. Just in, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Just continuously, it's over and over and over again. It's the present moment of this breathing body. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Just turn up the power of the mental microscope, make it more clear. Each moment of expanding. Pause, each moment of contracting, the pause. If 
to the beginning, the middle, and the end of each in breath. A brief pause. The beginning, the middle, and end of each out breath. A brief pause. Don't give the time for the mind to be lost in other thoughts. want to think about something, just think about in, in, sit, in, out, out, sit, in, think about the impermanence of the breath, breathing process. Moment by moment, breath by breath, try to notice at least three or four different sub moments of breathing in. Three or more sub moments of breathing out. Process of impermanence. Each moment arises and then followed by another and another. Being alert for thoughts sneaking into the mind, just keep letting go of the thoughts. Stick with the breathing. Even while you're Observing the breathing process, you hear sounds arising and vanishing in the background, even this voice. You can feel other body sensations, prickly, itchy sensations, pulsations, snakes or pains coming and going in the background. Coming and going through this breathing body awareness.
the alert of thoughts trying to arise in the minds of wanting, urging, especially to move. thought of confusion. Coming back to the impermanence of the breathing process. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sit. Can identify the five aggregates, you can add that to it. This is material vibration. This is pleasant or painful feeling. Perceptions, thoughts, urges, continually changing. Really thoughts of I, me, and mine, the ego consciousness.
Conditioned things of this body, mind, and world are impermanent. They arise only to briefly last and vanish. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to freedom. Thus spoke the Buddha. I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. We do the chanting on long out breath. Try to feel those vibrations in your body and mind on the out breath. Take a deep breath. Sadhu Place your hands at the edge of your knees. And take one more deep breath. On the in-breath, stretch your head back. And pull the hands on the knees to arch your spine backward. Lift the head up on an in-breath. On an out-breath, press the chin to the Notch at the top of your chest, stretch the neck vertebrae. Lift the chin up level on an in breath. On the out breath, relax, put a smile on your face. Okay, friends, so this brings our evening uh, meditation to an end. Why do we try to put a smile on our face after meditation? So that uh, he helps to understand, even to smile in the, in the face of impermanence and everything changes. People think that's a morbid way to see the world. No, it's actually a very blissful knowing that we can change, we don't have to get stuck. Keep the mind flowing and awareness. So that's the trick. 
Okay, friends, so uh, if you like some homework to do until next week, try to, uh, you know, applying or de you know, developing this uh, perception of impermanence in your meditations during the, the week. Of course, not only during your meditations, but you can see it in the external world too. Everything is changing, people around you are changing, your thoughts, moods are changing. You see it in the external world, but more importantly in our own inner world of sensations and thoughts. All right. Thank you, Thank Bhante. You, Bhante. So, Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a good night. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Mindfulness a day keeps, keeps Dukkha. Dukkha. Away. Away. <laughs> the mindfulness a day means practicing the M&Ms. That's the best way to keep your uh, perception of impermanence uh, up to par by pausing for a minute every hour to remind ourselves to get in touch with the present moment. Okay. So, namo. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.